Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with Tim. My name is Tim Haig Sr. I'm a speaker, author. I have Parkinson's disease and I'm a PD Avenger. Welcome to Coffee with Tim, a discussion of life and Parkinson's. If you're ever curious about what we're doing here, we're here not just to talk about Parkinson's disease, but also to talk about uh, just everyday life. And so some of you know that uh, here recently I um, bought a puppy. <laughs> we are day three into the puppy diaries as I'm calling them. And um, yeah, it is proving to be a tad bit challenging. <laughs> just a wee bit challenging um, when you have Parkinson's disease. You like routine. Um, you like to know that things are going to be pretty much the same day after day. And uh, that's <clears throat> not so much the case anymore. <laughs> These three days have been quite good, actually. I can't complain very much because, uh, let's see here, I wrote it down so I'd get it right. Night number one, which was three nights ago now. Our little Bella was up once in six hours, so I think we went to bed at like 10 or 11, something like that. She was up at four, and then she slept again till six or so. Not bad, right? Not bad. Um, after that, night two, she was up in once in seven hours, and that was something to the effect of going to bed at uh, 10 or 11 again, thereabouts, and um, then only being up at around, I think that second night she was up at two. Oh no, the second, yeah, the reason I'm not remembering the second night is because my my daughter got up with her uh, in the night, and I don't remember exactly when that was now, but I slept seven, seven hours straight, so that was phenomenal. <laughs> and then last night, she was only up once in seven hours, and we went to bed at about 11, and she was up at um, two, yeah, that's right. She was up at 2, got up and took her out, and then she didn't get up again until 6. So, I mean, hey, what, what's to complain, right? Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. So, I got no complaints there. Uh, it's gone very well so far. She is a beautiful, temperamented dog. She has a great personality. And, um, yeah, it's, it has just gone very, very well so far. I am. Am I happy we made the decision? Yes, I'm happy we made the decision. <laughs> um, it's challenging though, right? It, it's it's challenging because um, it, when you with Parkinson's, it's a kind of kind of thing where you you like your routines. You, you really do. Um, it's really hard to have your routines broken up a whole lot. And uh, you know, here I am. I'm the one. Um, primarily doing everything and that's the way it was planned this is my dog and while there was full acceptance and buy-in from the family um, it's my responsibility and I I think I took all the things into consideration that I needed to ahead of time but um, yeah we'll see we'll see how it all goes so um, what I'm curious about now is that our my typical morning routine is I'm up at about six and then um, I typically hang out you know the, the the wonderful thing about being retired and the difficult thing about being retired is that there is um, there's no schedule and I've actually come to find that that is the one thing that I miss the most about work and anybody who worked with me, anybody who knows me, will find that statement absolutely bizarre because you will know that I did not enjoy being told what to do. I did not enjoy having to be somewhere at a certain time. And as a nurse, you were told when you could go to the washroom. You were told when you would go to lunch. You were told when you would go home. And being a, a guy in nursing, I had like 300 wives. <laughs> so you, you were being told what to do all the time. So uh, now when I, I thought that when I got out of nursing, that it would be absolutely fantastic to be free of those kind of, of those kind of um, rigid daily being told what to do kind of things. And it's probably the thing I miss the most is that it's difficult to get up in the morning and not have 
someplace that you have to be, not have something that you have to do. Um, be lacking in that regular morning and daily routine. And what I'm finding with the dog, even in day three now, is that she's getting onto a routine. She needs to eat at certain times. She needs to be walked at certain times. She will get up at certain times. And I need to make sure that I'm keeping her on schedule for both for her well-being and for my sanity. But in that, I'm finding a new routine, a new uh, way to live life. And that is quite nice. Now, I will tell you, honestly, this morning, I am exhausted. <laughs> I have not gotten my full naps in every day. And yes, I'm... Uh, I nap regularly, daily, and it is an absolute necessity, an absolute necessity, and um, it's just not been happening the way that I would like it to, or that it probably needs to every day, but nonetheless, and I'm just looking for something here while we're, while we're chatting, but nonetheless, it's falling into a routine, things are coming along, it's, it's, getting, it's getting better, so I'm just going to do something here real quick. I need to see if someone is on. I don't see them. Okay. And I'm just gonna send a little note. Yeah, you know, if things worked the way that they should work, we will do something else here this morning, but it's, I'm, I'm doubtful now, but we'll see. There we go. We'll see what happens now. All right. So yeah, the dog has been good. Um, now yesterday, you're all wondering, you know, how's it gone with the peeing and the pooping and that. And yesterday we had an almost flawless day. Almost. <laughs> we had no accidents in the house. We went for three walks, which was maybe a bit much. We probably only do two today. Um, then my oldest daughter came over last night with her uh, boyfriend and they played outside with Bella for a good long time. But the thing that probably was our downfall is that um, we went through Starbucks and we got what they call a, a puppuccino. Uh, great little idea. Give her a little bit of whipped cream. Sounds like a great idea anyway. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Dumbest thing we did all day. After all the exercise we put her through yesterday, which I'm not, which is good. You need to, she's very, very active. She's very high strung in the morning. But after the uh, puppuccino, as they call it, she came in the house and promptly had diarrhea all over one of my carpets. Oi. <laughs> well, what are you going to do, right? You clean it up. You clean it up and you carry on. And, um, and that's, that's what you do. That's just what you do. And so again, not, uh, not overly bothered by that. Um, my dear wife has been very patient. Um, Cause like I said, this is more my idea than hers, but she is, she's, she's good. And, uh, yeah, it, it worked out all right. So the puppy diaries will continue. We'll see how it all shakes out in the end. Yeah, no more puppuccino, that's right. <laughs> At least not until she's good and settled. Oh, and the other thing that we probably did that's not quite quite bang on for this stage of uh, her life, because she's about nine weeks old, is that uh, you got to be, I'm learning, you got to be really slow in how, um... <laughs> yeah, Blair, puppuccino instead of puppuccino. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, we, we probably changed, started changing our food a little too aggressively. Um, we knew to go slow with changing over our food because we didn't know what the original uh, owner, the foster family had, had been feeding her. So we picked up some food and had been doing half and half, old and new yesterday. And that's probably a little too quick. So that probably bothered her stomach a little bit as well. So as a nurse, I have spent many years cleaning up lots of poo <laughs> so this was no big deal except that it was in my carpet and I think well we'll see this morning we, we've got some stuff sitting on it 
trying to make sure we get it all absorbed and cleaned up well. We'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I want to point your attention this morning to... Um, uh, and it's not working. It just will not do it. I, I'm coming to hate Facebook, folks. I really am. I keep trying to do new things here, and it just will not cooperate. But anyway, I want to point your attention to a blog I just posted this morning. It's on Facebook. It'll be out on Twitter and Instagram and uh, the rest as well. But uh, I want to point it to you, and it's called A Conversation with My Newly Diagnosed Self. And uh, just making sure... Now, one person said they weren't hearing me. Anybody else? Just in case. I want to point you to that uh, blog that just came out this morning. It's on Facebook. And, um, yeah, I think we're doing okay. You'll note it there. It's also on my website, timsenior.ca. And I'm going to try to get back at my blogs. I, I'm, I love writing, but I'm on again, off again. And I'm, I'm a notoriously bad blogger. But nonetheless, I, I quite enjoy uh, writing this one because it's, uh, I have given you the, the uh, foreword that I wrote for a book called The YOPD, Welcome to the YOPD Club, written by William J. Braddock, or he goes by John, John Braddock. A new friend of mine lives in Florida and uh, has written a really cool book. Uh, about what it's like to be diagnosed with young onset Parkinson's disease. He has gone through and interviewed 10 different people living with young onset Parkinson's disease and has done a really fine job of it. So uh, it's on Amazon. Have a look at the um, have a look at the blog. I think you will find the forward, the blog intriguing. Uh, I have taken a very different tact in writing than I normally do. Uh, I you know I'm very positive. I try to stay positive. I try to preach and teach and live positivity. Uh, but this disease is difficult. Uh, there, there are very difficult things that come with it. And I, I think it's, that it's important that we talk about some of those things and share some of those things. And so that's what I've attempted to do uh, in this. Um, so have a look and I'd love to get your, I'd love to get your uh, input and your, your thoughts. Yeah, I'm just going to try one more thing here. All right, on we go. Um, yeah, so I'd love to get your input on the blog, timsenior.ca, and um, or it's, uh, you'll find it on Facebook as well. And then if, if you like it, pick up the book. Or even if you don't like it, the book's probably better. <laughs> the people in the book are like uh, Heather Kennedy is in, in the book, uh, interviewed, Jimmy Choi, uh, Larry Gifford, my good buddy from When Life Gives You Parkinson's. Uh, the blog, you need to make sure you, you tune into that. Wherever you listen to blogs, go to When Life Gives You Parkinson's. Larry Gifford does a great job of telling the everyday stories and the important stories of Parkin living with Parkinson's disease. It gets into the research and all the stuff that's needed, uh, need, needs to be known about living with Parkinson's. Now, I have run ahead of myself here, and I forgot to ask you a question. What is your morning routine with dogs? I started on that and then I, I distracted myself. What is your morning routine with your pet if you have one? Uh, I kind of said what I was doing there with my routine, but I, I would like to know what yours are so that I can learn from you a little bit. Take some time, put it in the, in the comment section there, and I will do my best to respond after and um, let you know if I incorporate any of your ideas or not. <clears throat> and then as we go here, if you like, hit the uh, thumbs up and the like button. And that helps me a lot. Lets me know that I'm actually covering things that you want to hear about and that you find helpful. And um, yeah. The other thing I want to leave you with uh, this morning is, as always, the PD Avengers. Um, the PD Avengers, we are an alliance, a, a global alliance of people with Parkinson's. Our partners and friends standing together with one voice to demand change in how Parkinson's is seen and treated. Uh, we need you to help help us reach. Uh, we're, we're at se almost 1,700 PD Avengers right now. We're working hard to get to 2,000 by the end of December. 
And I really need, if you haven't, if you haven't become a PD Avenger, I really need you to go to pdavengers.com. Check us out. You will find that we are not a charity. We don't ask for money. We need your voice. We are a global advocacy group of people with Parkinson's working to change how Parkinson's is, is seen and treated. As you've heard me say many times, this disease has been around 200 years. And we have one gold standard, one medication that works for almost everybody. Not everybody, but almost everybody. That's what's considered a gold standard. We have one for, for the 10 million people in the world who have Parkinson's disease. That's insane. That is truly just an insane statement. There are so many things that need to change about this disease, and the only way we're going to do it is if we all stand together, raise our voices as one, then we can demand change. Then we can see something happening. And I will draw your attention back to polio, what we did back in the day with polio and eradicating it, what we did with HIV, and the people who got involved in the marches and the, the actions to get people's attention and say, we have to do something different here. We have to. Because this is insane how long this disease has gone on with so very little being done. And especially in light of the fact that we have just put how many vaccines together? In how many months? Months, not years, months. Multiple vac vaccines. And we have done so very little for Parkinson's. It's time to start raising our voices and becoming a little bit louder about what we expect to be done on behalf of people living with Parkinson's disease. So go to PD Avengers, check that out, and, and join PD Avengers today. Um, all right. It is Christmas. Next week, <clears throat> excuse me, next week is Christmas. How did we get here? How did we already get here? Unbelievable. Um, but it is. So uh, we won't, no, am I right about the exact date? I believe so. If it's on Friday, it is on Friday. Next Friday is the 25th. I will not be here on Christmas Day. Sorry. <laughs> I won't be blogging from around the Christmas tree. I, could, I suppose I could, but I won't. Uh, but we'll plan to see you on, um, well, will I be on January 1st? That's the next Friday. We'll see. Uh, I'll put something out on Facebook if we're going one way or the other. Maybe January 1st. Depends on how long I'm up. Uh, January 31st, and that's generally not long. I generally make it to about 9, 10 o'clock, right? So we'll we'll see you. We will be back um, eventually. And we may take two weeks off and not see you again to the 8th, but, but we'll see. But until then, I want to encourage you to live your best. Persevere. It's been a tough, tough, tough year. 2020 has has not gone great. We know that. But here we are at the end of the year, still kicking, still alive and well. Let's go into 2021 strong and um, with a good solid attitude and um, believing that it's going to be a better year, that we're going to make positive strides in our personal lives and in our world. The things that we're involved in are meaningful and that we can help others live their best. So until we talk again, take care of yourselves, live your best. We'll see you next year. All the best, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.